Well, a half a century ago, he says, quote, everyone told me I was nuts. But this week, a little vindication when his phone rang very early in the morning, telling 79-year-old John Klosser he had won the Nobel Prize in physics. This morning, we welcome John Klosser to Mornings on 2. Good morning to you. Good morning. So from Columbia to Berkeley, I know I've, I've heard you say people told you this is going to ruin your career. As a young scientist, you just didn't listen? Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I, uh, I realized what I was doing was uh, of recently uh, f uh, fundamental importance. Uh, and uh, I... Uh, was having a lot of fun doing <laughs> some very challenging uh, experimental physics. Uh, we didn't have any money uh, to do the experiments uh, at Berkeley, so we uh, uh, built everything from scratch. Uh, the, uh, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> we just used a lot of leftover uh, <laughs> physics department uh, scrap <laughs> for... Uh, for uh, materials to yeah. put stuff together with. It's a, it's certainly a lesson to folks, you know, in terms of, of if you have an idea, you should chase it down. And, and I got to tell you, I've been reading a lot about trying to figure out exactly what you're studying, what it means when you're talking about quantum information science. I, I have kind of worked around that that basically it's about uh, this entanglement. But can you <laughs> explain to me really kind of what you've determined and how it really affects us, you know, when we're talking about how it affects our, our, our move forward. We're talking about encryption and communications and, and calculations. Uh, uh, not to worry. Uh, I don't, still don't understand it. Uh, <laughs> that makes me feel better. <laughs> 50 years later. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, uh, okay, so <laughs> basically uh, uh, what the experiment shows is that uh, information cannot be contained in a uh, small finite volume. The, uh, the, uh, the simplest possible object you could think of is a is a single bit of information, but it doesn't necessarily sit uh, in a small black box on your uh, on your desk labeled Dell or IBM or HP or whatever. Uh, the it, it connects uh, over distances, it, it, right? Is it, it what is, I understand it, that you, that it, it doesn't is have to, yeah. it, it can be distributed throughout space, and and in fact. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, the Chinese uh, communication satellite, uh, the you have a pair of photons containing one bit of information that are separated by the order of tens of thousands of kilometers uh, apart, and you've got to measure both of them in order to get that uh, single bit of information. So 1972 is when you started the experiments trying to prove this. I, I, I read that you closed the last loophole in experiments in 2015. That's a long uh, time of trying to say, is this possible? Can we prove it's possible? And can we go forward? I know you share this award with uh, a gentleman, a scientist from France and, and one from Austria. What do you think this tells people as we, you know, we try to wrap around our heads at what we'll know 50 years from now. What's the lesson to be learned for the young scientist who's also being told right now, this is a career killer, don't do this? Well, to some, ex to some extent, I suppose it was a career killer. I've never been uh, uh, a professor, uh, <laughs> uh, only a, a, a research scientist, which is actually what I, I prefer doing. Uh, the uh, My associates, or my... Uh, co-recipients of the prize uh, okay, I, uh, were a bit more fortunate. Uh, okay, I, my work was done in the early 70s. Uh, Alan Aspects was done uh, sequentially in the 80s and Anton uh, Zeilinger's was done in, uh, in the 90s. Um, I don't know, I, I had fun. I didn't get rich at it, but I... Uh, 
Well, I, I, yeah, I think there's a, a there's a little bit of a cash reward of winning a Nobel Prize as well. So uh, may, maybe your time has finally come uh, in terms of that. Well, you know, in any case, uh, John Klosser, uh, a Nobel Prize is something to be uh, certainly screaming from the rooftops, willing to certainly worth getting up at two ish in the morning. Uh, so uh, Bay Area proud. We certainly appreciate all the work you've done in the science community. We appreciate you waking up early to join us here on Mornings on Two this morning. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> all right.